Thank you so much for downloading the episode on the show today. We talk about how much fun fall has been so far. We also talk about our vanity because there's been some new discoveries with my new mirror. All of this plus our ugly and awkward moments of the week. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie. One beetle crawls up my snatch and it's over. Paula. I I could eat like two pies by myself. Uncensored as always, it's time for the ugly truth. Welcome to The Ugly Truth. Oh my God, I sound exhausted. (laughs) Oh my God. Oh my God. I don't know what happened there. It sounded like a dying bird. It's like Mariah Carey. Yeah. Kind of. (laughs) Mariah Carey before she got on her depressants. Jeez. I wonder if that's why she gained weight. Um, I, you know what? She looks so good right now. And she, I, I was listening to, or I was looking at something and she's been on, um, her meds, her mental health medications Mm -hmm. for a good 18 months, I believe like solid. Yeah. She was manic depressive Mm -hmm. and, or is manic depressive. And so she finally agreed to go on medication. I think she had been diagnosed and she's like, well, fuck that. I'm going to do whatever I want, you know? Mm-hmm. And then she... Well, I mean, she went through a divorce and all that stuff. And- right. And so finally she's like, all right, I guess I should probably get on these. <laughs> so she's she looks amazing. Yeah. She was at the iHeart Music Festival just a few weeks or a couple weeks ago, last weekend, actually. Mm-hmm. And she killed it. I saw the videos from, obviously, Daryl has clients because he works for iHeart that were there. And they videoed with their little phones some, mm-hmm. some of the things. And she slayed. I mean, killed it. And then their backstage video of her leaving with her and her children were there with her. Aww. Yeah, she's she's kind of getting her stuff together and she wasn't surrounded by a hundred people. Yeah. She I believe she's dry. I believe she's sober right now, which even is better for her, I I would assume for her singing. Mm-hmm. And she just looked ama- she looked flawless. Well, she's really thin, but yeah. I mean, yeah, she was kind of chunky there for a bit. Yes. Well, she was drinking a, a lot. She was drinking copious amounts of wine. Yeah. So I think she's backed off on that and she's taking care of herself. I could not be more happy. It's, it's the way I felt when Brittany got her shit together. Right. And I know Brittany is handled heavily. Like, I think she has a lot of management to keep her on the straight and narrow. Right. Stephanie and I saw Brittany in concert, mm-hmm. gosh, six years ago. And it was not good. (laughs) She was a mess. But it was still cool to see her, you know. And she's really, she's so talented. She really is a talented person. Mm -hmm. So watching her dance and stuff was really fun. But I would love to see her in Vegas. The glitz and the glam and all that. I think it'd be awesome. So maybe someday. Anyway, happy fall. Here we are. It's fall. (laughs) Hasn't it been fun so far? freezing in the morning and sweating by the afternoon it's 55 at night which feels amazing when your windows are open and you're sleeping Mm -hmm. and then it's 96 in the afternoon which means you're like i went to this was a while ago but i had gone to the dentist and i was wearing a long sleeve shirt and yoga pants and my uggs because it was like seven in the morning right and i went in there and I was like, oh, this feels great. I'm comfortable, you know, perfect. And then by 1130, I'm like, why am I wearing this? I can't breathe. It's so hot. I know. It's insane. I hate this part of the year. I always have it. The Indian summer, as they call it. I don't know if that's appropriate anymore to call it that. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what you would I don't call. even the Native American summers. I mean, or... whatever. But Northern California in the Valley, it is oppressively hot. It feels almost humid. And everything's brown because it's dying. And, yeah. you know, even though climate change isn't real, apparently, everything is hot even when it should be cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it sucks. It sucks. It will so. be getting cold, though. I would. Mm-hmm. I predict the week before uh, Halloween. So we're going to be bitching about how cold we are? Well, that's just when it gets cool. You I know? know. I remember one year I took the kids out trick-or-treating. It was... Um, Gosh, maybe it was 2012 because the Giants were playing in the World Series and it was the last game and they won. Mm -hmm. 
Daryl wouldn't go trick or treating, <laughs> so I had to take him. <laughs> so he handed out the candy. No, the door was open. There was hardly any men in the roads. It was all moms and 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 kid and sisters because all the boys were at back because. Orangevale is a baseball town. Everybody loves baseball. Right. And so you're either an A's or a Giants fan. And so there was no, it was very low key. Earlier on when the game had started, everybody was out taking their kids, rushing through the neighborhood, <laughs> trying to get the candy in. At 4.30 in the afternoon. Yeah. It's like, hurry up. We got an hour. Ultimately, we actually put a bowl out in the door because it was just too hard because the game was really intense and we just it just but it was my point was it was so hot it was like 85 degrees oh my god kids were sweating in their little costumes it was insane i'm like what is going on it's like this is october late october oh god yeah okay so really quick i have to purge because i haven't talked to you in a week and we don't okay. really talk on facebook it's it's been a, it'll be about a week before somebody listens to the show the kavanaugh hearings happened did you watch any of it I did. Okay, I watched most of her testimony, and then I heard the intro to Kavanaugh's stuff. And it was fine initially, and then there was a point where he started to discuss his bros, and I literally had to turn it off. (laughs) I had to turn it off. Now, I'm just going to say it, and this is just... We don't have to, I don't want to delve because, mm-hmm. you know, but it, it really crossed over. It was no longer politics to me. That That's kind of my thought about it, it is it, it encompassed so many things that are in the social world of our lives, you know, just from women, m- white men, men in power, women who have, you know, championed and became powerful. It just it, it, it really encompassed so many things. This whole showdown, it felt like. Yeah. And and how fucking corrupt every politician is including right. any and all there there was no just republican to me i was disgusted by everybody personally but i decided i absolutely believe that she was assaulted there's no question in my mind the woman was assaulted and if she says it's this guy and she's saying it with that much conviction i believe it i also believe that he absolutely believes he did nothing i think to the ground he believes it Mm-hmm. The problem is, is that because he's taken a stance of, I don't do anything. I remember everything I did. Yes, I like to drink, but I am not one of those people that forget stuff when I've been drinking. It's difficult because because nobody, nobody drinks and remembers everything from 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. It's just impossible. But because of where he's standing, he has no, there is no in between for him. He can't say, yeah, I knew who she was. Yeah, we kissed because then it's over. So regardless of whether he knew her or not, regardless of whether he made out with girls or wasn't a virgin or whatever, he has to claim, absolutely not. I was the Christ of my group. I did nothing, you know? Right. I feel bad for that. The problem was, for me, is, and I I am so angry about it that I can't even, is that, I don't know if you ever have, but I've definitely been, I've had assault attempts in my life from men. Mm -hmm. And so what pissed me off is how affected I was by everything, how I I started getting like anxiety and I was like really like unnerved and I was having difficulty with the day and it pissed me off because I'm like, please, I am not, I've championed so much in my life. I have championed assault, not, I've never been raped. Right. But I've definitely had, I have been assaulted and it's happened more than once. And it wasn't, you know, like violent, but I have definitely fought off men before. Not, a, it's happened twice, mm-hmm. which is two, two times too many. And, you know, now I have this fear in my brain, like, I bet if I asked my daughters, they could probably tell me that they have been in a situation and they're right. young, they're young. And so to me, it pissed me off that I was affected. Because I don't want to be a triggered woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. But it did affect me. And so that that literally, I was emotionally drained after yesterday. And it had nothing to do with me. And that made me crazy. It made me mad. It made me mad. The whole situation really affected me. Because then you have to reflect on your own personal experiences. And it made me kind of upset that that is not, that her, what happened to her is so common. And I, I guess... If you have political aspirations, by the age of 17, you better be a straight and narrow person. Apparently so. It's crazy. 
Yeah, really. I can't imagine being held to the stand. Oh, my God. Can you imagine if one of us? <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> I wouldn't even run for the PTA president right now. <laughs> I don't even join the PTA. Don't. <laughs> don't do it. Good Lord. Yeah, I, I, la- I actually laughed at myself. I'm like, can you imagine if one of us wanted to be in politics and I just started laughing? Because it would be like, picture it. 2010 the exotic zone ball <laughs> i mean it'd be over it'd be over I'd oh be like, my god what? don't act like you guys don't like to have a good time <laughs> oh what like you didn't go to the human petting zoo when you were 27 <laughs> someone's like what's the human petting zoo yeah then it would be trending on twitter human petting zoo hashtag <laughs> and they'd be like you know senator wannabe <laughs> It'd be, or, it'd be just hilarious. Okay, so I have to tell you, last year, Daryl and I, I traveled with Daryl a little bit more than I normally do. And the hotels have this new thing where they have, and, and it's not brand new, but I, it was new to me. They have these new vanity mirrors that are attached to the wall. So you can pull it out and they have like their own lighting and stuff. And you, they're super duper close up. So you can see everything. These okay. LED mirrors for vanity sake. And, you know, they're just the round vanities, and they're really cool. And, you know, those mirrors that they sell at the drugstores and stuff where they sit and they have, like, two sides to them? Yeah. Okay, that's one's all. One's, like, the times 10, and the other mm-hmm. one's just, like, normal. Normal, yes. So they have these in hotels. And so the last time I used one was when we went to Half Moon Bay, and they had a really nice one there. And so I was looking. If you ever look at yourself that close up, your skin, ever, it is astonishing and it's horrifying by the way well when you said vanity with hollywood lights i'm like god i'm like do i even want to know no and so when i we were there i was like oh my god it's like i need to get my brows done uh do i have a beard now because you see all (laughs) your little facial hair uh you see every freckle every oh my god every scar from acne or zits or whatever you've you know done to yourself they're really, really educational. <laughs> so I immediately went out and bought one oh, okay. when, I, when I got home and I got it like a week ago. So I plugged it in and I looked up close. I was like, oh my God. I was like, I look horrific. I need so much work. I need so much work. I spent two days grooming my eyebrows. Just Go get them waxed, for God's sake. Well, no, but they were just some errant brow hairs that I just couldn't deal with seeing anymore. Because when you put, you know, eyeshadow or if you line your eyebrows and there's one or two hairs there, it's like you can't do it. It's It looks weird. And so because I was looking at them so close up, I could see all of them. And so I was just every day I would look in and I was, I was getting obsessive. And I'm like, OK, I can't get to a point where I have none. Yeah. So I really need to make sure that I don't freak myself out. Just get the little ones that you see with the microscope mirror. So I did all of that. Only thing is, well, first of all, my makeup looks better because I can see what I'm doing. Because I am, I, you know, I am old, so my eyes are shriveling up. Oh, you can't wear your little glasses when you're doing your makeup? <laughs> I can, but it's just, this is so much better. I mean, the lighting is better, everything. So I do that. So that looks really good. And he's like, why do you even look in there? So Daryl's like... He's like, yeah, I, he said something. And I said, wait a minute, did you look in my mirror? He goes, I might have. And I go, you did? He goes, Jamie, I look horrible. I'm a wreck. I have leather skin. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? I go, then for God's sake, do something about it. I mean, you know, God, have you ever tried to get a man to moisturize his goddamn face without sunscreen? I mean, taking care of their skin? It's ridiculous. You can't do it. They won't I bought do it. Proactive for Ryan, and I think he's used it twice. Ugh god see they just don't care i'm like ryan come on i'm like do you want to look like a pizza face or do you want to actually clear your skin yes you know the second he has he he's into a girl and she says something he'll be like meticulous he'll be washing his face three times a day yeah he'll wake up he'll come home and then he'll do it before he goes to bed so i said oh my god you look he goes jamie it's terrible i go see don't you don't you see and you kind of have to lean over sometimes because of the angle and then you know when your skin like you know gathers when you're leaning over it's the worst well don't miss your neck because there's a lot of little things on there oh trust me trust me i'm already looking at neck masks they have these things that you can buy where and they have them on amazon thank god so i can buy a bunch where you literally put like this gelatinous mask on your neck and if you do it it says if you do it for four days in a row that you'll actually notice a difference wow so i'm i'm doing it (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm doing it. They're like, don't ignore your neck, ladies. I'm like, trust me, I'm not. I'm just trying to find the right elixir to assist. Trust me, I can't ignore my neck. Even if I <laughs> wanted to. Yeah, exactly. It's like, God, I look like an ostrich. I have ostrich <laughs> neck. God. So I was looking, and I have a mole on my on the side of my chin, and it's really cute. Except that, you know, just like with a lot of moles, it has a it'll have a hair grow out of it occasionally. Uh huh. You know. Yeah. No, I have the one on my face. All women have one somewhere where where this all of a sudden the black hair grows out of it, and you're like, where did that come from? Yeah, like, what the hell? It's my Marilyn Monroe mole, and then yes. occasionally it has an eyelash that grows out of it. Yes, it's you know what it kind of grosses me out, but whatever. And so I I am now. I mean, if I even see a remote anything, I pluck that thing out immediately. And um, I wonder if that's why Jess Sarah Jessica Parker had her mole removed. She had a mole removed. Yeah, remember she has a mole on her her chin, or she did had a she had a mole on her chin for years. And after Sex in the City, she had it removed, and people actually noticed because it was a it was a like a Cindy Crawford mark. Yeah, it was big. She was kind of known for it, and I didn't think there was anything. I thought it was just part of her face. I didn't really think anything of it. But she said, "Oh no, it's just pre it's it's just preemptive. I didn't want it to turn cancerous or anything, so I just had it removed." And I'm like, "I wonder if you were walking around, and you forgot to pluck the hair out of it, and someone saw it." And then she's just like, "That's it. I'm removing the mole. I never want to worry about the hair again." I wonder if it was like curly or something like that i asked daryl i said have you ever noticed if there was a hair in there in the mole and he's like he wouldn't answer (sighs) and i said say it he's like okay well maybe once and i hit him really hard with chopsticks (laughs) i go how dare you i go why did you say anything he goes wife i noticed it and then the next day next time i saw you it was gone (laughs) I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, okay, as much as it was, it was, it would make me angry. But if I neglect and for some reason, I go, you have to say something. You have to say something. I can't go out in public with that situation if I'm, you know, forgetful for some weird reason, you know. I don't even know if anyone would see it. But I remember one time Victor's just like, oh, honey, he's like, you get home. You want to take care of your mole? I'm like, <gasps> I would have stabbed him with a fork. I'm like, let me find it on my own. Yeah. Don't I, ever it's a, say anything. It's a really weird situation. It's like on one hand, I don't want him to say anything. But on the other hand, I don't want him. I don't want him taking me about town <laughs> and having this thing growing out of my face God. it's a it's so <laughs> i don't know but now with with my new mirror i will never miss it the desire to look in the mirror is not wearing off i look at it i i love it uh so i decided i would do my mascara with it and i was putting on my mascara and of course because i'm awkward and ugly my elbow hit the um medicine cabinet door and i I mean, like, flicked my eyeball with a mascara wand. Oh, that hard. burns so bad. Super duper hard. It hurt so much, Paula, that I almost threw up. <laughs> <laughs> I am not kidding. <laughs> I, I almost threw up. I I have never felt pain like that. And, of course, because I'm morbid, I immediately thought, I'm like, God, you know, when they gouge people's eyes out, this is what it feels like. It hurts so much, you puke. Like if I was being tortured... And they pulled my eyes out. I would throw up on them, and then they'd be mad. <laughs> Just was, you're so weird. I know. I know. I'm weird. Poor Daryl. That's all I think when I think like that. It's just poor Daryl. Did you share every little detail with? I him? tell him everything. I tell him everything. Anyway, so yeah, that's been my life. Is the vanity mirror has changed my life completely? Wow. And um, I don't care. I just. I simply don't care. I just, I'm so happy that I have it and that I'm finally learning at the ripe age of 40 something that I needed it this whole time. I think about people who, who see me close up when I see myself like that. And I'm like my doctor, my hairstylist, his, you know, his assistant, they've all seen it. And I just wonder what they think, you know, do they think it's really unfortunate that she doesn't notice or take better care of her things you know, the only time they're looking that close is when they're like in your ear or something like that. I know they're not Hello. shining the light on your face thinking like, good God, I kind of want to go to a dermatologist, though. She probably go, oh, my God, <laughs> we have work to do here. They're only there to treat the the specific, 
you know, ailment. Yeah, I'd be like, what can you do about my wrecked face? <laughs> well, let's see where to begin. I'm just glad I don't have skin cancer or anything yet. Yeah, really. But, you know, because when you get older, sometimes that happens. Can so. you get these weird moles? Yeah, I don't want that to be me ever. I, I got it. No, I don't think so. I slather myself from head to toe in SPF. I, I, I'm doing all I can do. So we'll see. Anyway, so yeah, happy fall, everyone. And I'm ready for new sweaters and boots and all that stuff. Are you a pumpkin spice latte person? No. Good, neither. I'm glad you said that. I don't like that. Every time I keep reading about you, about a bunch of pumpkin spice lattes, and I'm oh, just it's like, everywhere. It's God, everywhere. People, control glu- yourselves. <laughs> well, you were with me. They have gluten free pumpkin pancake batter mix at Trader Joe's. I mean, that's well, like that. That's that's a mouthful. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I would be willing to try that with like some whipped cream on it, but oh, that'd be like one time. You can't eat yeah. that kind of shit all the time. Oh, I wanted to tell you. I want before we go into our ugly and awkward moments. I wanted to tell you all of the things that everybody loves that I hate. Okay, because I have some things. I haven't. I don't have them written down, but I've been thinking about this for a while, and I don't know if you'll agree or disagree. I hate Hocus Pocus, the movie. Never seen it. I just don't. I don't understand it. People are like, "How can you hate it? It's the best thing ever." And I'm like, "Why? Why is it the best thing ever? They're all ugly and it's weird." And I've seen it, and I don't. I don't get the appeal. Even Daryl loves Hocus Pocus. I don't. I. I am not a fan, at all. No, I've never seen it, and that is on purpose. Yeah, I just don't like it. I do not like pumpkin spice lattes. Me too. I am not a fan of pumpkin pie. I'm really not. I don't understand that one. I know you love pumpkin pie. I, I could eat like two pies by myself. Really? Yeah. No, I can't. I just, I'm trying to think if there's anything I like that's pumpkin. Uh, I had a friend who used to make pumpkin spice chocolate chip cookies in the fall. And they were really, really good. That I liked. Interesting. I do not like Monty Python or the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I don't care. I don't like the... I, there's no appeal to me. I'm not a big fan <laughs> of Monty Python. You like Every, the Rocky Horror? Mostly because I can't understand what they're saying. Yeah, because it's they're super English accented. And then when you're slurring, it's just mm-hmm. like... What? The Rocky Horror Picture Show, it's a little out there. Yeah, I would say that. And especially I, like people who dress up at the movie theater and like run mm, up and down the aisles and start they go nuts. songs and stuff yes. like that. Yes. Like if I was drunk, that might be funny, but <laughs> maybe. I don't, I don't I don't know. <laughs> yeah, not a fan. I I and these are things where people are like, "Oh, they're classics. They're they're this and that." I'm like, "Really? Really?" Cuz they're but just I Some people know. might feel that way about Grease though. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I I don't I don't know anyone like that, but sure, I'm sure there are people. It's just maybe what it is with the Rocky Horror Picture Show is that Tim Cur- Curry. Curry scared me <laughs> when He's he was dressed scary up. scary in every movie. He's scary. He was It. He, he played It once. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I remember the, I remember it as being like really young when I saw scenes from Rocky Horror Picture Show, and I just remember f- kind of being afraid because he looks he's got his mouth is so large, it's like well, takes up half his face, and he's just got those eyes and and then when he had the transvestite gear on, it scared me. Yeah, and it wasn't because he was a transvestite; he just looked scary to me, like a serial killer or something. Well, I mean, was he a transvestite? I thought he was just wearing... Was he wearing girl clothes? He was wearing, um, like, like leather lingerie. Oh, I'm just okay. a something transvestite. You know, the song. Right, There's right, a song. Right. Yeah, I gotcha. <sighs> Those are the things... I just had to get that off my chest. I, I Because I know everyone's like, how can you hate Hocus Pocus? I'm like, I just do. I don't like it at all. Sorry. I have an unnatural affection for all the Harry Potter movies. <laughs> You like them? Yes. I like Harry Potter movies. Daryl loves them too. Like on a Saturday because, you know, there's a marathon every weekend. Of course. I'll turn it to like, you know, the Sorcerer's Stone and Ryan's like, Mom, no. (laughs) You're like Daryl with his Back to the Future films. I'll come downstairs and I'll hear this, na, 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 na. And I'm like, no. 
I can't take it. I just go right back upstairs. Except my marathon lasts 16 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. You know what, though? I'm weird about movies. There are some movies that I can watch over and over again, but it can't be over. Like, Overboard has been on again quite a bit. The Goldie Hawn, Kurt Russell movie. And I love that movie so bad. But I can't watch it right now. I've seen it too many times. I need it to, I need to let it go for a while. Right. Before I come back. You need to detox. Yeah. Did you ever see the new Overboard? No, I refuse. Yeah, I didn't Did you see it? No. Okay. But I really, really, really like Anna Faris because I've been watching Mom like obsessively. That is such a good show. Isn't <laughs> I can't it the best? It. it is so funny. I, I don't know if I turned you on to it or if you just you found did. it organically. No, no you but did. But Daryl even watches it now. He loves it. They're so broken. The characters mm-hmm. are so broken and have made so many mistakes and they keep on plugging along. I think that's why they're they're so great because I don't relate to anything they're going through. Because I have never been an addict or or an alcoholic. Right. But that's just their plight. Everybody's got something. Everybody's got, I mean, you know, we all have something, whether it was a, a violent or abusive parent or you were, you know, an alcoholic or whatever it is. Everybody has to keep plugging along and it never goes well. <laughs> Not usually. You know? And this that's their, that's the whole premise of the show is that it, it only gets incrementally better. It never really go. You never finally get to breathe. You know what I mean? Life is not like that. Life is incrementally better if you are continuing to go forward as the whole point of the show, I think. Yeah. So. They can hope for like, you know, maybe one championship and then. Yeah. That's it. Like the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh, so funny. Anyway, yeah, so I just, I I do love Mom. And all the new shows, fall has started, which means you and I have to get on our uh, little carnival podcast that we have been talking about. Mm -hmm. They're all starting. Interestingly, you want to know the show that Daryl's somewhat intrigued by, which was shocking to me, Outdaughtered. You know, I've seen that one. I I think he relates. (laughs) I think that's why he likes it. Like he's outwomaned. Yeah. I, I really think he, I think that's why he watches it is he relates to. But they're that, all like almost out of the house now. No, they're two. <laughs> they're two years old. No, but I mean for Daryl. Oh, I know. But I, what I'm saying, but I mean, he's been living his whole life surrounded by girls. Yeah, like, that's true. And it sounds great, but not when you're the dad, you know, I think there's a lot of stress. I wouldn't, obviously wouldn't know. But I think there's a different level of stress that comes with being the only dad, the only male surrounded by all these little children that are female. You know, I mean, Tyler, it was so much older than everybody else. And he was like my guy. Yeah. Tyler and and Tyler's father was involved. So it wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. But all the girls were his, Mm -hmm. you know, and I just think although what there weren't six of them, there were three plus me. That's a lot. And so I think he relates to this guy <laughs> with all of these children that are female. I really do. And he just, so every time he comes on, he goes, oh, I remember those days. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, oh, come on. And I'm like, I don't remember the, I don't remember it like that. But, you know, he definitely. It somehow think, sparks a memory in him. Yes. So he watches it constantly and not constantly, but when I, I, I'll turn to it and it'll just happen to be on. And he'll just sit down and start watching it. (laughs) Makes me laugh. But yeah, so the new Goldbergs, the new Modern Family have come back. The new Uh Good Place is here. Did you watch any of those? So we haven't watched the new Goldbergs. I did. It was good. It was a 16 Candles thing. I think we watched most of the Modern Family. Was that the 4th of July parade? Yes. Yeah, we saw that. Are you going to watch any of the new shows? Like Single Parents? I watched Single Parents. Was it good? I thought it was terrible. Okay. Um, and I love Brad Garrett. I think he's hilarious. I do too. And he, he was the funniest part and it wasn't that funny. Not to me anyway. And then I watched A Million Little Things, which is the new drama. It To me, when I watched it, it reminded me of, do you remember that show 30 something? I was just going to say that. Yeah. It's just like 30 something, but they don't have the tearjerker part like This Is Us. Thank but God. it's pretty dark right off the gate. But the the actors in the show are all so good. And they're all funny. The women, I don't like any of the women, actually. I like all the men. 
Hmm. The women, I could give or take. I think they're not that great. But it, it remains to be seen. But the men they have cast in the show are brilliant and they're super duper funny. The guy from 40-Year-Old Virgin, the black guy. The one that didn't kill his wife with a samurai sword or stab his girlfriend 45 <laughs> times. <laughs> what? What? Just Google it. <laughs> oh, my God. No, not that one. He was the one where he uh, was watching... Oh. The zombie movie, and he was the one that's like, use your peripheral, you know, when he's telling him. And then how the to- girlfriend's like, You sure you wrote ho for show? Yeah, she was a ho. <laughs> hurtin' for, for a show. squirtin'. You're telling me that you wrote hurtin' for a squirtin'? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, that would be me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that guy. He's in it. Babe, I don't want you hanging around him. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, Honey, I was just trying to be nice, I was just trying to be his friend. <laughs> Just trying to find some nice people. I love that movie. I need to watch that. I haven't watched that in a long time. We have stepbrothers on our DVR because we're just waiting to watch it. But there's just nothing you can watch. Like not even a second of it with children around. You can. Oh, Ryan would love it. He'd be. He'd love it. It'd be hilarious. Jamie, it's horrible. Paula, he's he's 13. For God's sake, stop treating him like he's five. He can watch it. You think he hasn't seen or heard any of that shit already? No, I'm positive he hasn't. Oh, please. Well, would you, wouldn't you? would you rather, I mean, be the parent that lets him smoke and drink <laughs> before oh, okay. he does it out in the I'll street. Be the coo- I'll be the cool parent. I'll be the cool mom. <laughs> if you're going to drink, you have to drink in here. I'd rather you drink in the house than drink you out wanna there. You want to smoke? Smoke this whole carton. Yeah. Oh, my God. Dad offered me that once. I'm like, Dad, really? Do How I look like a do you smoker? Think I am. I'm your do daughter. I look? Yeah, do, yeah, really. I'm I'm my father's daughter. Do you really think that I'm going to do that? I see a trap when I see it. <laughs> <sighs> Whatever. Anyway, let's do our ugly and awkward moments of the week. So you don't have any ugly and awkward moments? No, I don't. My only ugly and awkward moment was that I was going to redo the same ugly and awkward moment that I had last week. That's fine. <laughs> You're busy job hunting right now. There's no I time really for am. awkward. Yeah, I get it. Nothing going on. I get it. Okay, well, then I'll, we'll just segue to mine. I had been kind of out of it. I started my period last week, and it was a rough go. Wow. It was, it, it was really rough. And I don't – remember I told you last, last week – how I was just super pissed off and everybody made me mad and, mm-hmm. you know, everyone was stupid and dumb. And then I said, you know, cue the next phase of PMS, which is the crying. And so the next day, and I'm getting to my awkward moment, the next day I cried over everything. I was literally watching Christopher Robin. I was watching the the movie about how Winnie the Pooh became a, a book. You went and saw the movie? No, 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 not that one. There was another one about the the author and his chil- and his son. And oh. that one was a few years ago, and it's actually quite good. And so I'm watching it. It's like 8 in the morning, and I'm watching it, and I'm weeping oh with God. reckless abandon watching it. And I turned to Daryl because he's in, he's in bed still with me, and we're drinking coffee and stuff. And I'm like, I told you, cue the crying. I'm so sorry. He's like, it's fine. It's fine. But the thing is, is that when you've been married this long, he starts to pick up on it. So he started getting weepy. Oh, God. Right? And I said, okay, this has gone on long enough. You know, so I got up. We are not becoming like, you know, pansexual. No. (laughs) We have our roles. Yes, we have our roles in this house. In this house, we have roles. So I just got up and I'm like, that's it. And then uh, the next day was homecoming. And so we went, you know, we did all the, the dance and everything. And so I come home and we finally are alone for the first time in like a week. And I'm like, oh, finally, let's just have sex. I started my period. <laughs> so instead, we went to Target. Oh, OK. <laughs> so That's what people do. In tar- so we're leaving. We're in the parking lot and we're walking across this little, you know, road to get into the Target store. And it's a where the cars go, and there's a stop sign right there, and there's a truck barreling down the road, and they're doing the thing that assholes do, where they don't slow down when they see pedestrians. You know how that they people they're not going to hit you, but they're mm-hmm. also kind of irritated with your existence because you're in their way. Oh, I'll go as slow as I want. Right. Well, I don't. <laughs> I panic because I don't want to get hit by this giant truck. I don't panic, and I just look at them, and if they keep giving me <laughs> attitude, I'll. Be like, fuck you! 
cool. You'll just sit down in the middle of the road. <laughs> it's like, I've decided I need to rest. My shoe's untied. Hold on. So all of a sudden, um, and this happens, I, I've done it to my adult children too. I grabbed Daryl's arm as if he was a child <laughs> and I started leading him, r- grabbing him and pulling him along. I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah. I did just that. There's no <laughs> emasculating there. <laughs> he allowed it because it was so weird. It was the most awkward moment we've had in a really long time. And what was funny is when I grabbed, because I grabbed like his uh, forearm, his muscle, the muscle part. Uh huh. I grabbed his forearm and it was completely unflexed because he was so surprised. Because <laughs> usually when you grab a man's forearm or his uh, upper arm, mm-hmm. they flex almost immediately. It's almost like a, they don't even realize they're doing it. You know, and it's inadvertent. They don't even know. They just grab it because it, it's, I don't know what they do, why, but they do. So I grabbed his, and I grabbed it so quickly and led him like a child so fast that it was soft. And it, it was, was weird. It because was flaccid. That, it was flaccid. And it was only then that I realized that he was so taken, taken aback by what I was doing that he didn't even know what to do. And so I was just like, I'm sorry. He goes, I am not your child. I'm like, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. And I was like doing the whole mom thing. I'm like, let's go. Come on. We're moving. We're moving. It was so funny. Oh, that is funny. It was embarrassing. I, I apologize. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, he goes, he wasn't going to hit us, Jamie. And I'm like, it's it's not even that. It's just, I, I immediately, re- it's just like when you grab somebody when you're in the car and you put your hand in front of their chest mm-hmm. so that they don't get hurt somehow. Yeah. I think I've done that to Victor before. And then he oh, just, I've done it. He just yeah. looks at me and looks at my arm and he's like, really? <laughs> what are you going to do there, chicken arm? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway, that was <laughs> that was my awkward moment. That's good. That's funny. Yes. yes. Oh, balls. <laughs> <laughs> Been watching the Goldbergs too much. That show makes me funny. It makes me laugh. Yeah, oh, it's great. It's so great. I still have to watch the uh, the uh, 16 Candles episode. Yeah, that's so. the new one that just came out. I can't wait. Yeah, it's funny. I mean... You know, the first episode of any season of a, of a show that we love is never as good as you want it to be yeah, because they're true. because they're setting up this the storyline for the whole season, you know, so everything's kind of new and whatever. But he's 16. I'm just wondering how much longer are they going to do the show? Like, how are they going to do that? I mean, I guess it's not really about them living at home necessarily. I mean, well, it would be difficult for them to do the show while they're all at college. And it's fictional. So, you know. I mean, and in the real world, there is no daughter, and they all went off to medical school. <laughs> they all became doctors. Yeah. So at some point, well, except for Adam, he Adam is the only one. He's in Hollywood. And right. And someone told me they had an older brother named Eric. They do. Eric is Erica. Yeah. Yes, I told you that. Oh. Okay. And he he is a doctor, yeah. and so is Barry, and then you know, and then Adam is the black sheep. So there's a lot that could happen, though. Like. You know, I mean, the grandpa's going to die eventually. I mean, he had in real life, he had Alzheimer's. That would and be so, horrible. Yeah. And so he will ultimately pass away. And then the dad did die of skin cancer. Really? Yeah. Yeah. About 10 years ago, I believe. And so, I mean, the re- you know, real life is never as funny <laughs> as the show. So we'll see. I bet you our show would have been hilarious. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, cutting out certain parts. Yes. No, it would be. We we were we were hilarious mm-hmm. for sure. Um, even um, it, you know what makes hilarity is all of the darkness in someone's life. It creates humor. Some of the funniest people had the worst childhoods. If you think about it, probably yeah. Yeah, because that's it's a coping mechanism, and if you're really, if th- that's how people cope, is they find the humor in the worst. Which is, I think, why we're so funny to each other. <laughs> I don't know if right. anybody else thinks we're funny. But, I mean, we are, to each other, we're funny. We created our own group and mom and dad weren't allowed in. No parents allowed. Why? Because yeah. you guys suck. Because you guys are the worst. You made us hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our gallows humor only goes so far. Sometimes I'll say something really funny to me. Uh-huh. And Daryl will stop and he's like, why, why did you just say that? And I'm like, what? And I'm like... 
I'll say stuff. I'm like, you know, I think I'd be a really funny mortician. I'd be so good at it. He's like, Jamie. I'm like, what? I could do it. <laughs> we were watching Naked and Afraid last night. Oh, God. I hate that show now. Well, I just, I watch it and I just always keep thinking to myself, like, why do people want to do that? I would never, I couldn't get over it. I'd be like, stop looking at my muffin top. I have a scar. <laughs> It'd be the worst. <laughs> it's not my fault. I was deformed, okay? I don't think I'd care about being naked. It's oh, just... really? Oh, God. I would be, I'd have fig leaves spit stuck to my nips all the time. I all the time. Care. I'd be like, go ahead, look. It's not that <laughs> no. great. Do you want me to spin for you or something? Ew! So, just get it out of the way. Yeah. But um, it would be like all the bugs and Paula, stuff like that. One beetle crawls up my snatch and it's over. I just... I mean, well, seriously. Like, last night, they c- they were infested with ants. <gasps> and Can it's you just imagine like, one crawling up your anus? I would sleep in the ocean. <laughs> I would just... <laughs> I will risk the sharks, okay? So the guy oh that God. she was with, they made it the full 21 days, but he was such an asshole. Oh, they like, all such are. an asshole. I told Victor, I'm like, is it considered murder if you accidentally <laughs> cut their leg in the middle of the night? And then the next day you have to swim to the boat? Because there were sharks in the water. <laughs> oh. And they accidentally ate him instead of you and you made it to the boat. Is that murder? <laughs> are you just or are you just setting it up for whatever happens will happen? Or are you just preserving your own life? <laughs> He's just like Paula. <laughs> after twenty, please. After twenty-one days, if you're stranded on an island naked and somebody's being a dick, the I think it's time. self-preservation, man. Self-preservation. Like, oh God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut your leg and with a giant gaping wound of blood. That's unfortunate. I'm sure it'll heal here. You'll be fine by tomorrow when we swim halfway in the ocean to our boat. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I was watching. I, I like Young Sheldon and the Big Bang Theory. Ryan loves Young Sheldon. We love it. And so we were watching it. And the guy that was on The Princess Bride, I can't remember his name. The, the small bald man who's the great character oh, yeah, actor. I know who you're talking about. Inconceivable. Yes, he's on the show as a professor. And he said something I told Daryl. I said, oh, I'm using this as an opening line for any work parties you make me go to this year. He's <laughs> like, what? It's like, did you know that ani can also be used as a form for plural anuses? So when someone says two anuses, you can just say ani. Really? Yes. Fun fact. Keep that in mind. I'm going to say that to someone when we go to a work party. One of Daryl's things that I have to attend you know, there are a couple a year that I usually go to, and I'll be like, fun fact, you can say ani instead of anuses. You're welcome. <laughs> the more Ladies you know. and gentlemen, my wife! <laughs> <laughs> <Duh>. <laughs> 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 if I could only get the DeLorean. <laughs> anyway, oh my there you have God. it. You know, I think there are times when there have been times Mm. where Victor has been afraid to take me to company parties. I don't doubt it. Why? Oh, please. You're a a delight. I would be proud to have you on my arm. And not fearful at all of what I would say. I'm more fearful of falling. (laughs) I'm more fearful of tripping. That's why you'd want me on your arm. Yeah, exactly. I I I need the stability. I mean, when you and I go to Vegas in a couple of months, trust you me. If I don't have a cane or a walker by the end of that weekend, I'll be happy. Yeah, really. I'm I mean, concerned. you just fall in place. I just fall standing. <laughs> God, it's embarrassing. I don't know <sighs> what the deal is. Anyway, all right, let's wrap it up. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We will be back on Wednesday. In the meantime, visit Amazon, do some shopping. We appreciate it. Or go to lipandclip.com and purchase some beauty products. And all of it benefits the show a little bit. And for that, we thank you. Have a fabulous rest of your week. And we, again, will see you on Wednesday. Bye. Bye. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.